government is way corrupt and doing everything they can do to keep Hillary Clinton from going to jail. WikiLeaks is out with even more evidence that shows collusion between the Clinton machine and your Justice Department. Now we're learning that the Assistant Attorney General, Peter Kadzik, who's responsible for informing Congress about the newly reopened investigation into Hillary's Clinton private server, is a longtime friend of who? Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta, and he has decades long ties to the Clintons themselves. And as a new WikiLeaks email from 2015 reveals, Kadzik is the FBI guy from a non government account, gave Podesta a quote, heads up about questions uh, a Justice Department official could have faced about Hillary Clinton at a congressional hearing. First she gets, you know, questions to a debate, now she gets these questions. Everything's handed over to the Clintons. Unbelievable collusion. He also appears to have tipped off Podesta about when the State Department would be releasing Clinton's emails. He wrote this, quote, there is a House Judiciary Committee oversight hearing today where the head of our civil division will testify, likely to get questions on State Department emails. Now, another filing in the Freedom of Information Act case went in last night, or will go in this morning, that indicates it will be a while, 2016, before the State Department posts the emails. This is beyond shocking and should concern every single American. The Justice Department is now severely downplaying what Katzik did. They're telling Fox News, quote, that he wasn't communicating via official channels because it wasn't official business. He wasn't emailing as Assistant Attorney General Peter Katzik. Really? How stupid do they think we are? And yesterday we also learned that Podesta once bragged that Kadzig, yeah, that same guy, kept him out of jail in a 1990s case involving Monica Lewinsky. This is beyond government corruption. This is collusion at its finest. And it's exactly why back in June, Bill Clinton thought he needed to meet with Attorney General Loretta Lynch on her plane for over 30 minutes and before FBI Director James Comey actually made a recommendation about Clinton's private server. Lynch said they only discussed their grandkids and Bill's golf game. Really? 30, 40 minutes? How stupid do they think we are? Here with reaction, former 2016 Republican presidential candidate Dr. Ben Carson, the editor in chief of Life Zet, Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated radio host Laura Ingram. Laura, before I, I, I go to this, I want to put up Brett Baer's reporting because this is, there's so much here. Yep. I honestly believe between that and the Wall Street Journal report tonight that the odds of Hillary Clinton being indicted are massive. What we now know is this is a long, ongoing investigation into the things that we have been talking about, and that's the pay-to-play practices at the Clinton Foundation. If you go back, maybe less than a year ago, James Comey wouldn't confirm or deny that that was happening. We now have learned the Clinton... Oh, go back to the previous one. We... If you guys can go back to the previous page. We now learn the Clinton Foundation probe has now taken a very high priority. In other words, mm -hmm. that would go into the Uranium One deal. That would go into the Morocco deal. That would go into the list that was made up of Clinton Foundation donors and friends of Bill that would have first shot at Haiti relief money. We know that agents have interviewed and re-interviewed multiple people in this case about the foundation. And we also have, as part of it, that the sources say there's an avalanche of new information coming in every day. And the FBI is reviewing statements from Clinton and top aides. And sources say the investigations will continue no matter what the outcome of the election happens to be. Agents investigating would likely continue to push and try to get an indictment. Yep. Brett Baer reported that tonight. The FBI has not destroyed the laptops of two Clinton aides, Cheryl Mills and another woman, and aides' laptops are now being looked into or exploited in, by the FBI. Now, here's another interesting part. Sources are now saying that 99% chance exists that foreign intelligence agencies did access Clinton's private email server, which was the very danger we've been talking about from the beginning. You couple this with WikiLeaks and their revelations, you know, they now show a finding of intent, meaning conspiracy to commit a crime. And officials have high confidence in what the agents have found about the foundation, meaning they think they've got the, the, the information for a prosecution. Let's go to the Wall Street Journal. We just had it up there for a second because they're reporting tonight that secret recordings of a suspect talking about the Clinton Foundation fueled an internal battle between the FBI agents who wanted to pursue the case and corruption. And then that goes back to what we were talking about earlier about this guy, Peter Kadzik, that's friends with, with John Podesta. 
and prosecutors who viewed the statements as worthless hearsay, people familiar with the matter said the agents using informants and recordings from unrelated corruption. Now, you know, I, I can go on, Laura, but I, I don't want to take up the whole hour. Yeah, I mean, Sean, I'll tell you this. I was a, a, a white-collar criminal defense litigator in my old days as a lawyer, and I'll tell you this. When, when you have an investigator, a federal investigator, going back to re-interview witnesses, they're only doing so because of new information and new evidence that they've gathered. And that is indeed what's happened here. So whether we're talking about Cheryl Mills or some of the other top officials at the State Department, they gave various interviews to federal investigators, uh, had conditional immunity. It's a limited immunity. Uh, and now if through WikiLeaks and other documents that uh, apparently are coming into, the, uh, coming into the FBI and other information that's coming into the FBI, again, we don't know who's cooperating with them now, Sean. I think we have to, we have to remember that. There, there are people who are freaking out right now who are connected to this, thinking, oh, my God, I never signed up to do time for the Clintons. I'm going I'm to save myself. When you get into that mode of people saying, I'm going to save myself, that's when it gets really dodgy for the principal players. Let me ask We're you as a lawyer. We're talking Huma Abedin and Hillary Clinton and other top officials at state. So that's when the, je the legal jeopardy for Hillary is growing by the day if this is the type of, of uh, intensity that this investigation is gathering. Okay. Now, there's, as Brett reported, an avalanche of evidence on the Clinton Foundation investigation, and barring, quote, you know, obstruction in some way, agents investigating would likely continue to push for an indictment. Let's move over to another issue that we got revealed today. That is the FBI agents, they're making their case about the Clinton Foundation probe, but it's the Justice Department that's throwing up walls and obstacles. And then you've got this guy Kadzik, the best friend of John Podesta. And we've got information that the Justice Department, as well as the State Department, were tipping off the Clinton campaign. Kind of like CNN giving her the questions ahead of time. They cheated everything, apparently. How important is that, that now the FBI, or at least agents, are clearly leaking this information because they feel an injustice has been done? Yeah, they don't, they don't trust the higher-ups at the Justice Department, which is why they're going to this extreme, Sean, at the FBI. They've been stonewalled, it looks like, from the reporting tonight on Fox News. They've been stonewalled along the way by DOJ, by, by Loretta Lynch, who... You, you would imagine is probably consulting with someone uh, in the White House. And this, is, this thing is being stonewalled. They've decided, look, we've got to save our reputations. This is about the rule of law applying across the board evenly to everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what your last name is. And we're going to do this the right way. And I, I'm telling you, when you start throwing around possibilities of five to ten years in federal prison for federal conspiracy, Perhaps, uh, as, as Newt said earlier, uh, uh, RICO violations, uh, you know, false statements, perjury under oath, destruction of federal documents. People are going to start believing it's time to save themselves and to cut ties with the Clinton uh, people. And I, I think Barack Obama is going to be in a tough place here because if this is what's happening at DOJ, I mean, is this really how he wants to end his presidency? And, and, and oh, at I can tell point, you how it's going to end. He's a special he, prosecutor, but Sean, a special he's prosecutor. A, well, I, I guess, but that's, that's in the end, that doesn't look good for him either. A special no, prosecutor agreed. at some point has to be called in. If if, if there's right, this much turmoil, you need a special prosecutor. And you, I think Laura's touched on a very important point, Dr. Carson, along with the fact that now 99% chance that five intelligence agencies, foreign intelligence agencies, hacked into that server. Okay, that means she compromised American security at a high level. And we believe one of the reasons she was trying to avoid congressional oversight, Freedom of Information Act requests, so that's why she set up the server in the, in the first place. Also, deleting 33,000 uh, emails, it wasn't about yoga, a funeral, and a wedding. It probably was about the quid pro quo, pay-to-play scam that they had going at the State Department. But my question is, Laura's right. Uma Abedin signed a form, a separation agreement, and she said and promised that she, at, barring jail here, that she had turned over all classified materials. Every single instance that there's a classified piece of material on that computer, she's facing jail time. Now, are those people going to stand up and lie for Hillary and go to jail for her? 
Well, you know, there's such an avalanche of, of corruption coming out every day. People are almost becoming numb to it. But, you know, there is a good thing here. The, the good thing is that these FBI agents who swear to protect this country um, and to uphold the law cannot sit down and put their heads down and shut up. This is what the, the corrupt people want to happen. They're not swamp creatures. Um, and, and that means that there is hope for us. I've encountered so many people who are just discouraged and they say the whole thing is just a mess and we're lost. But we're not lost as long as we have people like that. And I, and I do believe that there will be people who are out to save their own skins. This is all going to come out because Hillary knew that if she erased those emails and asset watched them, that that would come into question and that she would be criticized for that. But she also knew that what was on those emails was even worse than any criticism she would get. We're only touching the surface. It'll take us the full hour tonight to break down all this new information. My, my exit question for both of you. In an hour and, and 46 minutes, we're five days away from the election, Laura. What is the impact going to be? 27 million people, 28 million people voted already. What are we going to do? Well, I, th I think people going to the polls on Tuesday, people still voting. They, they, have to, they have to be thinking, do we really want to do this for another four or eight years? Is this really the best that we can do? Well, it won't do? last four if, years. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying, is this, is this really w what it is to vote for a, the first female president of the United States? I mean, if, if people want to vote for the first female president, that's all they care about, they should vote for Jill Stein. At least she wasn't in public office and yeah. trading her position for favors. So uh, it, it, the, the stench of corruption is overwhelming. And what do you I think, think Dr. Even Carson? Democrats I don't, have to think I don't think they. That. I don't think they want the first female president to be convicted and carted off to jail either. But the American people are wise. And Thomas Jefferson said that we would come to this point where we were about to change into something else and the people would realize what they were about to lose and a movement would start and they would correct the situation. This is the correction. It is going to happen. I predict yeah. it right now. Well, I hope the people in New Hampshire, Colorado, New Mexico, Minnesota, exactly. Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin are watching and Florida. We're better than this. Because We're better than they this. control this election. Guys, good to see Absolutely. you. Thank you.